Hey, this is Swapnil Bhatia here from thebook.com and today we are going to talk about Linux Mint 17 KD which was released just a few days ago. I installed it on my two systems to see how it works with the hardware before I go ahead uh, to talk about it. Linux Mint has always been a great operating system from the early days because the two versions it came out with Mate and Cinnamon they were trying to fix the problem that the GNOME and Ubuntu Unity had created for a lot of users who wanted a traditional desktop environment. So when we look at Linux Mint KDE, since I'm a Plasma user myself, I was interested in it. I'm using Arch Linux, I'm using OpenSUSE, and recently I also started using Kubuntu because I found that uh, since uh, Kubuntu separated from Canonical in a way, because now it's getting funded by Blue Systems, it has improved a lot and the latest release which is 14.4 .4, it's a very good release I mean I would put it in par with OpenSUSE when it comes to polish and you know the overall experience earlier Kubuntu was not as good as one would expect a plasma system to be so it is obvious to compare Kubuntu with Linux Mint because they both share the same code base they are from the same family Ubuntu they're both either flavors or derivative of Ubuntu so the installation process was as usual very simple i mean it was less intimidating than uh, fedora's partition manager where you have no clue what to do so so a new user can very easily install uh, linux mint on his or her system once you install it you know the whole experience is very beautiful you know they have taken a great care of offering a very consistent and very polished experience everything works out of box because Linux Mint packs a lot of codecs and drivers and they have done some great things to improve the overall user experience when it comes to drivers as well as the software so if you don't have uh, internet connectivity and if you have uh, a wireless chip which needs uh, a driver you're stuck because without the wireless chip you cannot connect to the internet and without the internet you cannot install the driver so what they have done is they have packed a lot of drivers with the image so now the drive driver manager you know when you when you look search for a driver it will ask you to insert or you know plug in the USB or CD so that it can pull the drivers from there and install it it uses the install medium as a temporary repository so that's one good thing second good thing that they have done with the software is that now they also show what type of update you are getting when you are updating your system you know it's whether it's a security update or whether it's a, you know what kind of update it is as you can see here so that's another good thing then they have their own software center which does a neat job of giving details and descriptions of the software that you're going to install it also gives you some screenshots so you get an idea of what you're going to you know what kind of application what's what it going to look like i'm sorry it's like too many words what's going to look like it does have a rating system uh, though it's a bit tricky because I think it would be better if there is a centralized rating system across all Linux based desktops so that you know you know which application is the most popular application or what comments other users are making though it will be a pro bit problematic because the problem an Arch user will face will have nothing to do with what a Linux Mint user is doing or what a Fedora user is doing makes no sense for an Ubuntu user so yes you know it's a bit tricky you know to to consolidate that data but anyway it's an overall a good system where you know you do get to know the ratings and reviews from other people the how do I don't know how effective it is because in Linux world I don't think comments matter that much as much as bug reporting so if there is some inbuilt system where you can also file bug report in a very easy manner i think that would be a great help for linux mint developers as well as the developers of that application and of course it will be good for user because the user will get a better experience now uh, we have talked about these two things now let's talk about the uh, the overall plasma experience on linux mint i think linux mint as usual offers a very good experience whether it's you're using made whether you're using cinnamon or whether you are using uh, kde's plasma and uh, this edition is no exception when you when you boot your system you'll get a very good plasma experience i mean i would not call it pure 
plasma because some may argue that they are not using cadmium but I, I don't think it matters it, you can install if you want i don't know why you would want to do that but uh, overall it is a very good experience one problem that i always saw with uh, with plasma based system and the problem is not at kd's end that was the gtk application which is like gnome application don't look very good in kd um, earlier Firefox or Thunderbird or Evolution or Liferea or Chrome, they would look ugly, you know. But Linux Mint has done a great job here, though they're using the same themes. But uh, apps like Synaptic, you know, which would look ugly in Kubuntu, look just beautiful and native in Linux Mint. <clears throat> though there are some problems also. Like, for example, I don't know if other users have... Uh, come across this problem of course they would come across because the problem exists but i don't know whether they got to know about this problem or not it's like for example if you are using evolution or life VR or any other gta app and if you try to move folders you know or if you want to change the order of the folder for example in life VR, rss reader if you have created certain folders let's say technology science um it could be lifestyle and now you want to arrange the folders or the RSS feeds you cannot just drag and drop or you know you can you can't just you know uh, select and move up and down it just doesn't work with the default theme so I had to change the theme GTK theme so that I am able to do that so that is one problem I mean it could be a deal breaker for a lot of people or for example in evolution I have like four or five email accounts and I wanted to give an order you know so I know this is the official MUKT account I can check then this is my personal account and then that's that account my, of my wife so I, I can give order but it was not easy it's not possible to change it in the given theme so that is one problem which is there with the GTK based application otherwise it looks very very beautiful I mean in Kubuntu Synaptic actually look very bad compared to Linux Mint so I think Kubuntu developers may try to you know look at these areas and improve the overall experience now uh, another thing that I would like to talk about is uh, while Linux Mint is a good operating system there are two areas which I have some issues with one is upgrade path uh, unlike other Ubuntu derivatives or flavors there's no clear or clean upgrade, upgrade path you cannot just run add get just upgrade and upgrade to the latest version of Linux Mint. Uh, the Linux Mint developers themselves have, you know, cited it a couple of times that, you know, it's not very easy. So that is one problem that I see when I recommend Linux Mint to a new user, or especially a user who has been using Microsoft Windows XP, because that user cannot upgrade his or her system every six months. You know, installing Linux Mint or any other Linux distribution or any other operating system once is a lot of work. And to install it every six months so that you have the latest um, applications as well as you have the latest uh, packages is a bit challenging. That is one area where, you know, when I compared it with Kubuntu, I found Kubuntu to have an edge there because you can very easily just upgrade Kubuntu. You know, you, will, you, you don't have to reinstall Kubuntu to upgrade to the next uh, release another problem that I have seen I am not aware of the solution is that um, how to get latest packages in Linux Mint for example uh, right now K there is KDE 4.13.2 branch out which are latest packages and of course you need latest packages because of security and because of a lot of features you know they keep adding new features so why should I miss the feature which is already there in a stable release in Kubuntu, you can very easily add the Kubuntu PPA and then you will get the latest packages. But I am not aware of any PPA for Linux Mint which will allow me to uh, update to the latest packages. So that is the second disadvantage of uh, Linux Mint over Kubuntu. That said, I mean, you can use Linux Mint or you can use Kubuntu. I mean, if you ask me to choose between Kubuntu and Linux Mint, I cannot pinpoint you know at anything there are certain advantages of kubuntu and there are certain disadvantages of linux mint so you have to decide what you want as i said the overall experience is good but the thing is kubuntu is not far behind there are some disadvantages as i said about upgrade and the latest packages so that puts linux mint in a bit of disadvantage when compared to kubuntu so um i mean if you ask me what operating system to use i mean I might suggest Kubuntu, you know, because of 
if you're recommending it to a new user and that, that new user doesn't want to reinstall everything every six months, then that makes sense. Otherwise, Linux Mint is a great operating system. I mean, especially this um, Plasma release is a great release. You know, you should try it out even if, you know, it doesn't matter. If you're somebody who is like, for example, in OpenSUSE or Fedora or any other operating system, you know, not every other, but these operating systems need to be reinstalled. So, so if you don't mind reinstalling an operating system every six months, then that's not a problem. Then you can go for Linux Mint. Otherwise, it's, it's very obvious. I won't take any sides, but it's very obvious which operating system to use. That also raises one more question, and that question is whether these two operating systems make sense at all together because, I mean, I don't find any difference between Linux Mint and Kubuntu. I do see a very strong reason for Linux Mint Mate. I see a very strong reason for Linux Mint Cinnamon because it is offering solutions that people need, you know, but I don't really see any any reasons for these two operating systems, you know, uh, existing and evolving separately while they offer almost the same thing, especially when they are getting funded by the same firm, which is, I think, Blue Systems. So I know there may be a lot of technological reasons why these two, you know, these two uh, projects won't merge, you know, but I, I think if they do merge and if they do consolidate, uh, their energies and their talent, then we might actually end up with a very good uh, Ubuntu-based operating system, which offers an awesome Plasma experience. I mean, I, I I really don't know what's going on there, but that would be my approach, you know, that, that these two projects work together instead of working separately. Uh, anyway, that said and done, um, you should go ahead and download Linux Mint and try it out. And as I said, there are pros and cons. Choose what you use. It's Linux word, it doesn't really matter, you know. As long as you're using Linux, Linux as long as you're using free software, it really doesn't matter which version you're using or which distro or which flavor you're using. So just go ahead, download Linux Mint and let me know what you think about it. Thank you, see you next time.